specific word for you this morning. If only you can cry to him to send you, you the word he has for you this morning. Rabo, you will not live the same way you came. Father, do not pass me by. Do not pass us by. We have come to meet with you, O oh God. Please do not pass us by. Do a new thing. Do a new thing concerning that situation, Lord. Please do a new thing. Do a new thing, Lord. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The King of Kings, we say thank you. The giver of life, we appreciate you. The one that can do that which no man can do, we adore you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Thank you, Father, because we know that you will visit us by reason of your mercy. Thank you because we know that you will do a new thing this morning. Glory be to your holy name. That they will commit the service and ourselves into your hand. That they will ask, oh God, that that word that we need, that will cause a change in our lives. Lord, release it to us in the mighty name of Jesus. That they are the end, let your name alone be glorified. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. Be thou glorified. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you are happy to be in his presence this morning, shout the loudest hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seat in his presence. The devil is a liar. Praise the Lord. The topic before us this morning is total restoration. Total restoration. If you have been coming to church since this month, you will know that this has been the theme for the month, total restoration. And I believe God that many of us have started experiencing total restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll be taking our text quickly from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. It's a story we all know very well. I'll read from verse 1 to 10. Praise the Lord. The hand of the Lord was upon me. That was Ezekiel saying. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley. Which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them. Round about. And behold. There were very many in the open valley. And lo they were very dry. Praise the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go three. And he said unto me. Son of man. Can these bones live? And I answered. O Lord God. Thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon those upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin. And put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Nine. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And he said to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breath upon this lane, and they shall live. 
So I prophesied as he commanded, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Praise the Lord. Before I go further, I would like to make this statement. When we say total restoration, we are not talking about the restoration that man can bring about. In our text, Ezekiel was a man, a prophet, and God was the one commanding Ezekiel. And as a man, he acknowledged the fact that he was just a vessel, just a man. God will ask him, and he will reply, telling God that God knows all things. Because Ezekiel himself knew that only God can bring about total restoration. Praise the Lord. What is restoration? Restoration involves the returning of a thing to its rightful place. Something that must have been displaced. When you bring it back to the rightful place, it has been restored. When you bring it back to its original condition, it means restoration. For every man on earth, there's a plan, there's a purpose of God for their lives. And total restoration can only be when, there's an, when there is realignment back to that purpose. Praise the Lord. Total also means complete. You know, when we talk of total, we need to understand the implication. You can have partial. You can have incomplete. But when we say total, it means complete. The full package, praise the Lord. So when we say total restoration, only God can bring about that which is complete. Praise the Lord. From our text, who and what can we ascribe as dry bones? You know, whenever you read a story in the Bible, we tend to distance ourselves from the story. Praise the Lord. But if you are able to open your eyes and look, you will see yourself in that story. And that is why it is written for us, for correction, for reproof. To direct us. Praise the Lord. So when we say dry bones, what are dry bones? Dry bones can mean help hopeless situations. Hopeless. When you look at them, you don't even know how anything can come out of them. The Bible calls, calls them dry bones. Ezekiel looked at this bone and he said that they were very dry. When you see a dry wood, what do you do with a dry wood? You cast it into the fire. There's nothing, again, that can come out of it. Praise the Lord. What is dry bones? They are forgotten, forgotten situations. Maybe you are here this morning and you have been forgotten. Those bones were in the valley. They have been forgotten. They were in the valley situation. Nothing good was ever believed to, have to that will come out of them because they have been forgotten. What are dry bones? They are shameful situations. Maybe you are finding yourself in a situation that is shameful. That can be ascribed or described as a dry bone situation. But turn to the man by your left or the woman by your left and say there is hope. Because when God is involved, there is hope. Praise the Lord. It can also be a situation that is disjointed, disconnected. Praise the Lord. There are some vital lessons that we need to learn from this valley of the dry bone and the situations of this dry bone. Number one, when God wants to start the work of 
restoration. He remembers the forgotten. These dry bones, they were men that we are slain in a valley and forgotten. But a day came, a day came that God remembered not men, but dry bones in a valley. That is to tell you that that case of yours, it does not matter how hopeless it may look like. If only God can remember you, you will experience total restoration. Praise the Lord. The bones were dry. When you look at these bones, everything was against them. Number one, they were very dry. Number two, they were in a valley. Number three, they were forgotten. And they were hopeless. That may be someone's case this morning. But God will remember you in the mighty name of Jesus. God remembered the dry bone. And the story changed. Praise the Lord. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 1. Noah was remembered by God. Noah was in the ark and it was as if he had been forgotten but a day came, a day of remembrance. God remembered him. God will remember someone this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. When you read the book of Genesis chapter 30 verse 22, Rachel was also remembered she was considered to be barren. Her own sister, her elder sister, was having children. But a day came that God remembered her and opened her womb. And she was able to conceive. I pray for someone that will believe this afternoon. That that situation you are into, that seems to be, you have been forgotten. God will remember you and light will shine upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. When you read the story of the children of Israel, it was a hopeless situation. 400 years in slavery. They stayed the first year, second year, till 400. For such a people, there will be no hope of an escape. But a day came, this same God, the God of total restoration, remembered them. That is why I know it does not matter how long you have been in that situation. God will still remember you in the mighty name of Jesus. I would like you to stand up because you are going to pray. You are going to pray. And I want you to pray as desperate as you can. You are going to cry to God and say, my father, my father. Every dry bone situation in my life, in my family, revive them again. Let them receive life. Cry to the almighty God. We don't have time, so as we uh, will be praying along, ask that God will revive every dry bone situation. It may look hopeless. The doctors might have given you a hopeless result. Cry to God that God should revive the dry bone situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You will cry to him again and say, My father, my father. You remember the dry bones. You remember the dry bones in the valley. I am in your presence now. Remember me. Cry to the almighty God. You have come to seek him. Ah, you are not in the valley. You have come to seek his face. Ask him to remember you. Father, remember me. I have come to seek your face, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's be, let's be seated. God bless you. Lesson number two that we can learn from our text. God visited the dry bones. God did not just remember the dry bones. He paid the dry bone a visit. He took Ezekiel to the valley. He took him to the valley. For some 
one present here this afternoon, God will pay you a visit in the mighty name of Jesus. Whenever God comes visiting, miracles are bound to happen. Whenever he comes visiting, you are in for a surprise. And that is why I know that for someone that will shout the loudest hallelujah, you will receive your miracle before you step out here today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. When you read the book of John chapter 5, verse 2 to 9, John 5, 2 to 9, talking about the lame man that was at the pool of Bethsaida. This man had been in this situation for 38 years. I don't know for how long he had been at the pool, but he has been there for a long time. But the day Jesus visited, something happened. Jesus did not just visit. In short, Jesus visited. The man did not even know who Jesus was. But Jesus came because of him. The man was ignorant of who Jesus was. Because had it been he knew that that was Jesus, he would have been crying, Ah, Jesus, heal me, heal me. But when Jesus asked him, What do you want to be done to you? He started complaining about his hopeless situation. About how dry the bones in his life have been. But then Jesus because he has visited and because that day was the man's day the man was revived the man received his miracle today will be your day in the mighty name of Jesus when you read the story also about you know the woman with the issue of blood Mark, Matthew chapter 9 verse 20 to 22 in her own case Jesus was passing by she was not the one Jesus came to visit. But she took the initiative and proposed in her heart that if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. Maybe you are here this morning and the visitation we are talking about is not for you. But you can provoke God by your faith. You can provoke God and say, Father, I must touch the hem of your garment. Today must also be my day. That woman with the issue of blood, she suffered. But the Bible recorded that because she had faith in God, because she made the move, she was restored. The man that was lame, Jesus came for him. The woman with the issue of blood, Jesus did not come for her. She took the initiative. Maybe you are here this morning. And today is not your day. But by your cry, this, uh, let's be upstanding. By your cry, let's be upstanding. We need to pray. You can make this day your day. The woman with the issue of blood, she made that day her day. You are going to cry to God and say, My father, my father. By your mercy, let today be my day. By your mercy, let today be my day of total restoration. Cry to the almighty God that by the mercies of God, God will not pass you by. That woman did not miss her miracle. She proposed in her heart and it was unto her according to her heart desire. Cry to God that, that let this day be my day. Let this day be my day. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Brethren, suffering was put to an end in the life of that woman. You are going to cry to God. And you are going to cry to him and say, My father, my father, put an end to all forms of suffering in my life. Give me all round rest cry to the almighty God that God will put an end to every form of suffering in your life and God will grant you all and rest in the mighty name of Jesus Lord put an end to every form of suffering in the life of your people and grant us all and rest for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed 
lesson from our text number three. We can be seated, please. God did not visit the dry bones alone. He came with a prophet. God did not visit the dry bone alone. He came with a prophet. Praise the Lord. Whenever you see a declaration, every month we have a new declaration. It is prophetic. It is prophetic through our Father in the Lord, which is like your prophet in City of Light. So when we say God was commanding Ezekiel, God was instructing him what to do. Through the inspiration of God, the team came forth. If only you can key into this team, this month will not end before you have your own restoration. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hosea chapter 2 verse 13. Hosea chapter 2 verse 13. Hosea 2 chapter 13. visit upon her the days of Balaam. Praise the Lord. Okay. Give me Amos 3, 7. Amos 3, 7. I'll come back to Hosea. Amos 3, 7, please. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets to his servants and prophets. Praise the Lord. Meaning that when God wants to act, he reveals whatsoever he wants to do to his prophets. Praise the Lord. So we need to understand that prophets, your prophet is key. When you look at 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, talking about, you know, Jericho and Elisha. Jericho was cursed. But through the prophet of God, Jericho received her... Of Jesus. I don't want to go back the same way I came. Lord, do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Maybe you are here this morning and you have not even given your life to Christ. You don't know him yet. There can't be total restoration. It can only be for those that are connected to him. And that is why if you are here, all eyes closed, I want you to just indicate by lifting up your hands to the almighty God that you need him. He is the one that can cause a revival, a transformation that even your enemies will be amazed. So in a moment, just lift up your hands and just walk to the altar. I want to pray with you because God will do a new thing. Please just be coming. There is no time. No time. No time. Just come because God wants to do a new thing. You have heard the word of God and you want this God to give you total restoration. If there is no one, then we take this last prayer point and we go. Let's lift up our voices to God and cry and say, My Father, my Father, cause my enemies hold me down to hear a noise from you and let there be a release in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer.